okay uh, am i audible yeah hi good morning everybody all the participants here i myself is dr ila and uh, i'm a coordinator of palja district we are representing ipwc and i like all the participants here to be uh, enjoy this meeting and let us know if anything uh, you want us to do more with the webinars further and uh, this is a fourth activity of palga district and this is a first webinar we might go somewhere up and down please 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 do cooperate with us and here i will introduce ourselves as a ipwc members uh, what is ipwc is uh, ipwc was started on 30th may 2018 it functions under the guidance of national head dr ruchi vashne and ip president executive dr sanju jha IPWC works towards conducting public awareness camps, CME workshops. It aims at bringing together all physiotherapy professionals for sharing knowledge and improving public awareness about physiotherapy. We have five zones in India with heads for, for each. Dr. Pooja Kamble is the West Zone head. The state team of IPWC Maharashtra includes state coordinators, Dr. Shuana Ganvir. Hello, everybody. Am I there? Yeah, I'm audible. Okay, so here I am representing IAPWC. There was some network issue. Please bear with us if something goes wrong. Yeah, okay. So we are representing IAPWC. Uh, the state team of IAPWC Maharashtra includes state coordinator Dr. Suvarna Ganvir, joint coordinator Dr. Snehal Patel, and sub coordinator Dr. Uttara Mohan, Dr. Priya Karande, and Dr. Nirali Sangvi. In Maharashtra, IPWC has conducted 40 plus low cost activities in various districts. In first corporate IP conference held in Indore in April 2019, Maharashtra State received award for best state IPWC. Now let me introduce to our resource person, very, very, very enlightened one, very dynamic. Our, uh, I, will, I will introduce Dr. Dipali Pawar, who is MPT, 20 years of experience in pediatric, ex-professor ex in SMU University. She is founder of Arya Physiotherapy Center, Vasai. Also, she is HOD of PT Department of Vasai Blind Relief Center, which is one of the most oldest and well-known hospitals in Vasai. She also provides uh, uh, various free services in multiple orphanages and old age homes. Now, I please request Dr. Dipali Pawar to start with the presentation. Ma'am, please take over. Let's start with the first webinar. And uh, may I please uh, request you to share the screen? Okay. Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody has just enjoyed the me time from past 45 days, I guess more than that now. And everybody has started going back to work. So I um, a humble request that everybody just follow the protocol and take care of yourself. So whatever Ila has talked about me, apart from that, always see to it that, you know, th there's nothing like a senior junior in our field. We all are colleagues. So anytime, any any small questions to any complicated questions, I'm open for all. I'll answer them all after the session. Uh, also, one more thing I would like to add on, ki because of the Zoom speed, the videos are not very much uh, uh, visible or they come with a break. You must have all attended webinars, so the video quality is not very good with Zoom. So what I'll do is after we finish this, what the group which we have on the WhatsApp, I'll forward the video so you all can see with ease. Okay, I'll start with my presentation now. Okay, so as you all know, herbs palsy. The first thing which comes to your mind or maybe you all were wondering, well, like, herbs palsy is a simple condition hai, just the book says that the recovery is like, you know, three to four months or maximum one year. So what is the need for the lecture? Or why is it very much needed that a physiotherapist has to intervene? This is what I'll be telling you. There is a plain, simple funda of exercise wherein they say you give gentle exercise movement, gentle passive movement, or, or something like a massage. 
or a, a sensory integration but no there are a lot of different things which over the period of time we have designed to treat herbs palsy so that we get a complete recovery by 6 months of the baby's age before i start with the treatment plan let me just brush you all up with what is exactly herbs palsy you all must be know i know you all have been uh, somewhere in the uh, point of your practice you all have come across but let me just brush up with the herbs palsy now what is herbs palsy basically it is an injury to the main nerves the c5 c6 but whenever we see there are many a times kids which are in the involvement of c7 c8 comprising till the t1 here i will be discussing with only the obstetric part of palsy of palsy can be any time due to other injuries but now for today's lecture we will be obstetric of palsy what are the other names which are internationally used for palsy is the obstetrician palsy the brachial birth palsy or the obstetric brachial birth plexus palsy now why it is important to know all the international names is nowadays you it what i have experienced in practice you get few people who come from other countries here to take treatment so then we have to know all the other uh, ideologies which are used worldwide but so all my hand and right? someone has to be muted i can just have background sound please mute yourself okay now the causes basically during the time of delivery there are two different forces acting on the fetus the infant the two forces which are the first one is the internal force which is applied by the mother that is called as the expulsion uterine force the other is the force which is applied by external Now, either one pressure goes little low and the pressure outside by the gynec goes a little higher this is the point where the damage occurs the baby gets stuck the head is pulled laterally which causes a stress on the up point that is just before the bifurcation mostly there can be an associated shoulder dystocia the shoulder gets stuck because before the at the time of the delivery the baby quarter turns and the shoulder gets stuck so usually this happens with the babies who are heavy babies nowadays they tell the parents to uh, the mother to go for a planned cesarean but then it can happen you know it's, those are the perinatal causes so nothing can can be done actually what happens during the time of labor so this is something which happens of, as a perinatal complication now other thing the aim of physiotherapy you it, it's usually as i said earlier it is said that you get a complete recovery but our aim is to give 100% recovery before any kind of sub tightness or any kind of deformity pops in one question is something which is like you know when has the physiotherapy to be started so it has to start by the 8 or 10 days believe me earlier when i used to treat of palsy the patient used to come to me maybe somewhere around 6 months 1 year 8 years 10 years but with my practice with my videos with my awareness even the top neurologists have started sending referring patients to me right on the second or the third day so now here is the actual thing what we can do with a baby of just one day old or a two day old so physiotherapy usually starts at the 8 or the 10 day the diagnosis is as you all know as i said if the baby is come to you later you have everything in hand like an mri or a emg ncv or an x ray or a neurological prescription everything is there with you but now when the baby comes to you only on maybe a four day old or a five day old baby coming to you then what then you don't have all these things in hand so it is just a normal observation assessment of the arm the baby cries and you see the affected arm doesn't move at all the affected arm is mostly in the position the shoulder at the adduction and internal rotation elbow unable to flex the elbow this is like fingers are flex and pronate so this is a simple evaluation without doing any therapy you can just simply evaluate the baby and come to your conclusion on the of pulse one important thing is whenever you are someone else is on the street okay 
one important thing is whenever you start the earth treatment just rule out if no other investigations are done just rule out for a clavicle fracture many times it is seen that there can be a hairline clavicle underlying fracture which once you start your exercises may worsen so just to rule out you can have an x-ray done now what when when the baby if the baby comes to you on the second or the third day should you start exercise no first seven days you can just use that phase for a good proper positioning of the arm because definitely after an injury there will be an inflammation there will be some kind of fibrit there will be some kind of injury to the nerve at least give that seven day rest phase where you can utilize this phase to give a good counseling to the mother to the family which is very much needed because uh, the the thought of it that a baby of 7 8 days has to do exercises doesn't digest with the parents they don't understand what is to be done so i explain them utilize this phase for a good counseling along with that give them proper positioning like you can see the baby here in this image we are doing exactly the opposite what of, of the injury of the position of the limb the limb can be held in an external rotation flexion at the elbow now you can see the fingers are flexed what can be done for this you can just give some small kind of cotton ball to be folded in the arm so in in the wrist or the palm so that the baby doesn't feel the fingers flex every time so these are the different positions you can also give an overhead complete overhead positioning and now certain times i have seen people advocating splint this shouldn't be done with a flail it's a lower motor neuron kind of a paralysis the arm is totally flail the baby is very tiny so don't overload the baby with any splint in this phase you can just use simple pillows you can use certain kind of in the next book one thing which is important mentioned everywhere see i have highlighted this one thing which is important mentioned everywhere is recovery to 3 to 4 months of age now a frozen shoulder come to us if the frozen shoulder comes maybe on the second or the third month you know the amount of tightness they come with so will the baby also not end up having tightness and deformity in the shoulder then why not start the physiotherapy right in the initial phase why wait for 3 to 4 months to get a recovery this is why the reason is i am trying you know past few years i am trying to create that awareness this more early you start the baby comes out with flying colors with absolutely no no deformities in the arm so this is the reason if if at all any uh, you know neuros or orthos ask you that if if the phase it will come out you the baby will come out of it this is the reason Three four months which are crucial, you will end up into some kind of deformity. So you start as early as possible. Now read this very carefully. This is something which is a generalized physiotherapy management, which I do, but then I don't stress on this. This is what it shows is a exercise to improve or to maintain the RM of the joint, the sensory stimulation. provision of splints again in the secondary phase and educating parents this is something which you can read everywhere but this is not the protocol which we actually follow what we start off with here is the electrical muscle stimulation now you all know electrical muscle stimulation giving to a 8 10 days baby is like you know a little kind of a setback but i advise you you don't get any kind of complications it goes very smooth only thing is try to use a lot of cotton and one thing which i my many of my students have seen me treating i directly put my hand on the stimulator so that i can control the amount of current i'm using for the baby plus there are sensory issues that's the reason where the baby very comfortably takes the stimulation and constraint induced exercises this i'll be showing you all in the videos the treatment pattern now this is a very important picture the baby in the image the small baby in the image is our totally 100% recovered baby started exercises on the second week and can you see the left arm absolutely in a good position no deformity whereas the other baby was 
advised or referred late started physiotherapy but did not have a complete physiotherapy schedule and can you see the deformity which has developed now will not this be there with her lifetime see the contracture see the internal rotation at the shoulder see the flexion contracture because of the bicep and the brachialis see the wrist see the fingers are also into more of flexion this is the reason where we have to see to it that we don't end up into this and when a baby is referred early all these things don't happen i will so we have to handle both the group of muscles here it is not like that you no know, looking at the muscle force or the nerve force you treat particular muscles no we have to treat the hand as a whole now let me just show you few videos first let me just explain you about oh, what we the videos will not be very much uh, clear because of the zoom application but i will send you these videos you can again go to the videos later chara na kona kona gaya tumhi chara somebody voice is still there ma'am just ma'am ma'am just two minutes i think there is somebody who is still unmuting themselves please don't unmute yourself there is one constant person who is unmuting again and again please don't unmute please mute yourself everybody videos are very important the last people who are joined up the last three people please please mute yourself you are audible ma'am please start i'll just stop Yeah. Okay, now see this baby. You can see one thing. What I do very prominently is I keep giving something in the finger so that the baby doesn't neglect the arm. Baby uses the arm properly, and that gets the awareness about it. Now you can see this is how you can judge the herb palsy. The baby is crying and trying to move the arm, but it is absolutely not possible. So this is how. you can come to your conclusion of the diagnosis now let me go to the treatment part very importantly what i do here first thing is a sensory integration sensory integration as you all know people who practice with uh, ndt and pediatrics because the sensory part of the nerve the nerve sensory part of the nerve is also involved there are diminished sensations on the arm so what you can do for that is right from day 1 or day 2 you can start using textures like you know soft textures semi soft textures and little rough textures you can use those textures for stroking to improve the sensation as well as you can facilitate the muscle movement so textures is something right for the mother to be done on, on a home basis it can be done you know maybe 10 to 12 times a day other important thing which you will not uh, find anywhere in the article like i'm planning to patent my research here because you don't find these things done on herb palsy is the joint approximation technique now you all see the joint approximation is something which is has to be done in a weight bearing how will you be do you i'll show you the video later how will you do it in a small in, in an infant it's very simple you use the reverse funda you stabilize the scapula in the linear perpendicular force the shoulder in abduction 90 degree you can just give mild compression to the shoulder and the shoulder girdle to initiate the proprioceptors you all know joint approximation technique works wonderfully the other thing which is very important here is in joint approximation technique you get good excellent co contraction of the agonist and the antagonist now this has to be done with a good hold because you need at least when a muscle play you need at least 40 to 50 contractions in one go so you hold the limb approximately for maybe around 2 3 minutes and you get very good co contractions of the agonist antagonist this is for the shoulder and the elbow together you can do it separately you can do it first for the shoulder you can then do it for the elbow same in the linear pattern you can do it for the wrist then you can do it for the finger this is how you do the joint approximation technique 
the next thing is the next video which is very interesting which i usually in my daily routine call it as a torture therapy it's not a torture therapy for the baby but we call it as a torture it's called as a constraint therapy now see the video about the constraint therapy See, it's a very simple. Can you see the amount of contractions or the efforts baby is trying to put on the arm? Uh, what I am doing is I am holding the other three extremities. The baby, the moment that you hold the baby a little tight, the baby is getting really cranky. Now you can use this crying force to get any. Situation in the shoulder. Okay, one more thing I do with this is when I'm doing the constraint therapy, I try to give mild rotation so that I also achieve a horizontal adduction. See, the baby is cranky, but at the same time, at least in a minute, I have got around 30 to 40 contractions of the anterior fibers of the deltoid. So the baby is trying to, you know, release herself and using that force. You also, this, this technique is very frequently used as a reinforcement technique in the adult family. So, this is how I use the constraints. Someone is audible, please, off your video or audio. Okay, so this is what is constraint therapy. Very easy, can be taught to the mother also. Mother can do it very frequently. The more the number of contractions achieved, the more the number of the strength of the muscle increases. So it, it looks like a, a torture therapy, but it actually is a very, uh, what you say, very useful procedure. Now I show you the same baby, the results in the same baby after a few days, maybe around I say 10 days of my therapy. The baby is very comfortable. Baby has started initiating the movement. Baby has started doing a very good. Can you see? You can see make out from the baby's age. There's no much difference. Just in a matter of 10 days. Can you see the good amount of rotation which we have achieved? External rotation, flexion at the elbow. Constraint therapy, may if you want to achieve it for the elbow, what you can do one more is you can stabilize the affected shoulder also. So you hold the shoulder, baby automatically tries to supinate and tries to flex with the help of the expulsive crying force. See how very comfortably the baby is doing the flexion as well as the external. External rotation has to be very importantly achieved as early because if not achieved, it further ends up into the capillar distortion. So see how comfortably the baby is doing all her regular movements. Let me go to the next slide. Okay, now this very easily, if you see the video, everybody feels that I'm doing an NDT or SI, but no, this is not NDT SI. What I'm doing here, if you see very, this can be started around third week or fourth week when the muscles have already attained a grade two. Now what I'm doing, I'm not doing any kind of NDT. I'm doing a very simple technique. I'm again holding the baby on the ball against the physio ball. I am using gravity, a grade 2 gravity for the shoulder movement. This Usually it looks like an NDT technique which I am doing. I am just holding and rotating the baby front and back so that the gravitational force acts wonderfully on the muscles and the baby. See, I have not done anything passive. Have you noticed till now, I don't concentrate more on passive because passive movement... See again here, now I'm holding the arm so that the baby is trying to supinate. Watch it carefully if possible or else I'll be sending this video later. This is all active assisted exercise. A passive ROM will not give you good results. You know, how much a passive? Even in the hemi, adult hemis you see, passive doesn't work. A PNF technique or a gravity force technique helps you wonderfully. I'm just holding the baby. I'm Shifting the baby a little towards gravity so that the baby, see how beautifully the baby is doing abduction, finger extension, the baby is rotating the arm, finger flexion, elbow flexion, shoulder flexion, everything is achieved in this moment. Only thing is you need practice, practice and practice. That's it. 
how beautifully the baby now this when i'm holding the just proximal to the elbow the baby starts initiating the brachial so this is not an ndt technique this is the gravity reinforcement technique which is used to achieve the active assisted movement by the baby involve the baby in the exercises so the baby doesn't neglect the arm neglect is something which comes very fast to the baby one month of no exercise and the baby accustoms itself to do everything with a normal hand they absolutely start neglecting the affected hand so that for that reason involves the baby actively use a lot of rotational forces use the whole body for exercise just don't you do exercises for the arm use the whole body once you get a little strength you can start with the midline activities you can start the holds of the bottles you can start the holds of the toys again one more very important thing now when we know the baby the, the arm is plain the baby tries to avoid usage of the hand here there is something interesting which you can do mummy mummy mom ne ke phone mat kar hello please participants okay. please what you can do please please you mute yourself you can, you can add a visual feedback or an audio feedback like india mein to apne ko malum hai haath mein bahut sara dhaga vaga bandhte hi hai so you can use this you know either some kind of a visual toy or something a small toy which can be added to the uh, wrist so that looking at the light flashy lights the baby tries to initiate the movement or you can add something like a, the, the noise with the rattler toy which can be given in the arm or can be tied across the wrist so that the visual and the auditory feedback helps the baby this can be done as a home therapy helps the baby to realize or to recognize and do the movements of the affected arm so this can also be added showing you the next slide okay now this is our baby who was referred to me by dr udani on uh, december 19 and uh, he was just 10 or 12 days old and he started with a good therapy somebody sharing the screen also it's okay fine i'll manage constraint therapy was done bone exercises were done gravitational force use therapy was done and see how beautifully the baby is someone else is sharing the screen please stop sharing see how babe beautifully they doesn't look like an earth baby using the arm to the fullest using bilateral absolutely using the finger flexors elbow flexors now one thing is very important thing here is um as i said parents counseling yes that has to go someone is sharing a paint brush can you just see that okay hello now as as dipali yeah, ma'am yeah, uh, okay. is it okay Fine. now is it okay i can understand sab ghar pe chote chote bacche honge jo khel rahe hain I know, but then, like somebody is actually yeah, doing that. That's okay. I can understand because looking at all of you all, I can uh, sense that all have got small, chota bachus playing around. So it's okay. I'll manage. No worries because lockdown me bachche zada affected ho gaye hai. So it's okay. So, actually, there are unmuted okay. people so now. Now, now did you? So that's okay. Now, did you all come to the? Um, conclusion like normally what is said for an herb palsy is the general gentle passive movements and gentle massage and sensory integration now no don't for the protocol is simple as a home basis but something which you have to very religiously follow is the constraint therapy then the sensory integration part where you in on the sensory part of the arm you can do use any kind of textures you have to be very gradual and very gentle with the baby constraint therapies has to be done you can do the ball therapy using the gravitational force once you start feeling that the the tone of the limb is improved you can start putting the babies on the ball and give very nice uh, active assisted exercises hydrotherapy yes hydrotherapy also works beautifully in 
herbs salty but then it it's again restricted here because you have to be careful from all aspects you cannot just take the baby to a pool and do hydrotherapy you have to manage everything with the temperatures and the techniques so when the condition can be beautifully treated on the opd basis you don't have to indulge into other things uh, the other thing which i said was the constraint therapy then the wall therapy and later when the baby achieves it's not that in 3 months the range is achieved and the therapy is done no then you have to concentrate on the strengthening maybe around 4 or 5 months now what in the in case of babies you cannot use any kind of therabands or weight cup so now here comes the fundamental position exercise pn techniques and joint approximation like the babe elbow weight bearing exercises the forearm weight bearing exercises the shoulder weight bearing exercises like the the ndt positions the crawl positions one arm weight bearing positions in side line making the baby even the roll, simple technique of rolling works wonderfully because what happens is we have to concentrate on the midline activity because the baby is not using one affected arm so you give lot of log roll and you achieve a very good horizontal adduction just sharing you the last one more video the overhead activity as well as a good coordination in both the hand usage of both the hand so usually it happens after a month or two we advise them to go on a home therapy which i absolutely keep keep good follow up because any single muscle showing weakness or the weakness stays back the baby ends up into deformity so it's like you know till the end strengthening has to be continued till the baby reaches a complete recovery so to brush up to end with it when we when a baby is ref, just one sec when a baby is referred to us on the first second this this i'm talking only about the early intervention i'm not going into details about the later phases when the baby comes then when the kids come to you at the 7 or 8 years of age then the whole treatment plan is changes then there are a lot of deformities lot of contractures uh then the, the botox comes in or a surgical release i am not entering into all that i am just explaining about the early the first and the second week so as i said i'll just brush up with it the first thing first very important thing is the evaluation part never forget to take an x ray because you can the clavicle fracture can go and ignored and then that can be a cause which can you know hamper the treatment process so first thing is an x ray the second thing when everything start the normal treatment start concentrate on the sensory part also because that usually gets unnoticed so start with the sensory stimulation constraint therapy start it right from the 7th or the 8th day constraint therapy gets gives us very good initial movements of the muscles use lot of rotations use the whole body don't concentrate on moving the arm every time so may end up into a rupture because it is very frail the ligaments are very frail so you can end up into any kind of a rupture you can make the ligaments more flaccid so don't end up into just passive movement use the whole body as a rotation also use the baby's arm concentrate more on active assisted exercises later when great tools are achieved concentrate on the ball exercises use lot of gravity for increasing the strength once the great three is achieved then you can again concentrate more on the weight bearing exercises prone position elbow weight bearing exercises side lying elbow and shoulder weight bearing exercises this is how you can give a complete approach of physiotherapy i also advise whoever is interested you know herb salty and all is something which is a demonstration is always better so whoever whoever has attended the meeting you all are open any time mere clinic mein saal mein char bachche hote hi hai herb se so i i am my clinic is open anyone can come down who is interested there is an herb salty association also anyone interested can come down contact me if you want to learn few techniques with pediatric techniques are something which has to be hands on any any technique in physiotherapy 
so i i my clinic is open any one of you can just come down and you know after this covid gets over after we maintain the social distance can up the question thank you iap wc i can see many of my students here yeah one more thing before i conclude um i i was a lecturer for many of each and everybody you all really make me proud when i see your achievements all my students i it makes me a proud it's a mothers day today and you all are like kids to me thank you so much thank you thank you so much dipali ma'am i'm so proud uh, like the lecture went really good and we really enlightened with your knowledge uh, now we will proceed with our question and answer dr uttram mohan and dr nirali sangvi will start with the questions and answer and participants are still requested to put their questions into the chat box and any questions which are left uh, maybe because of a time or uh, any other consequences we will be putting your answers back to you via whatsapp so please don't leave the group till we are like you know uh, informing you all so please be in the group and please be patient please keep yourself mute we will be answering back to you each and every question please keep writing into the chat box and uh, uh, please moderators dr uttra mohan please start with the questions please yeah uh, uh dr dipali my Hello. first question to you yeah are you able to hear me yes 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 my first question to you is in case of uh, uh, overhead positioning of the arm uh, are there chances for dislocation and what precautions will be taken for the same see initially on the first two days you can just concentrate at the 90 degree position where there is absolutely no pressure on the joint after few days maybe on the third or fourth day you can start with the overhead positioning there is absolutely no uh, risk of dislocation in the baby because even the uh, arm is flail the ligaments are not that lax in the baby if you make if you feel the arm the muscles are lax but the ligaments are not lax so if you give overhead abduction and a flexion this position you what you can do is just support with small cushions at the anterior aspect and the posterior the inferior aspect and you can just hold the arm with small pillows the baby pillows you can use this this doesn't lead to any kind of shoulder dislocation it has to be of course it has to be done very gradually and it has to be done with a very good padding so that can be achieved easily there is no no harm of dislocation uh could you please unmute uh, dr nirali uh dr ila can you help yes, her yes, with yes. Uh, unmuting yes yes yes, yes. i am doing i am doing i am doing wait give me two minutes one more thing i i would like to mention here is uh one more thing i'd like to mention here is we have in our webinar dr ashok bhanushali who is with me from past 7 years and he has helped me a lot with all my herbs palsy so i would take this opportunity to thank him he handles very well because i am very known to go on vacation so ashok bhanushali handles my kids very well so i'm just taking this opportunity to thank him yeah next question uh uttara ma'am can you please continue with the questions okay okay dirali you uh, have any question she has but uh, the, the thing we, is yeah uh, unmuting mic is not getting unmuted yeah okay, yeah. okay what as as said by ila i guess ila's voice was little low i'll tell you again we will keep the group open till today any questions you can i'll send the videos also after we finish the meet and you all can put the questions today before tonight i'll try to answer back all the questions if at all anything is missed i'll answer back my yeah. next, next question one. okay uh, what would be the post operative physiotherapy management for children who undergo nerve graft or a nerve transfer uh, post operative if you see see now at present i have got five kids 
who are uh, in the age group of 7 to 10 now there is nothing post operative uh, as in a tailor made every kid has got a different uh, clinical picture and the surgeries are different so now you talk about the nerve graft the total therapy procedure goes as in a rehab of the muscle nerve grafting is uh, done usually nowadays they don't uh, go in for the nerve grafting because it has to be used from the uh, other the side the common saphenous nerve so it is usually not used but in nerve grafting it all goes like a uh, a peripheral nerve injury patient what you do all the treatment plan has to be followed similar if you talk about the muscle graft usually nowadays we have seen they use a lot of muscle grafting from the subscapularis muscle or the serratus anterior muscle which is used as a flexor then you go in for a muscle rehab you have to give stimulation in those cases also for the rehabilitation of the muscle because the muscle which is used is a new muscle it doesn't know the action which it has to be uh, no it has to do so you have to do a pro- follow a proper rehab or procedure uh, in case of nerve grafting and nerve transplant as well as a muscle grafting but nowadays i'll add on one thing nowadays what doctors usually prefer is a uh, when a kid goes to them at the age of 8 or 10 when they have got deformity more and the more than the grafting and the nerve uh, muscle grafting and the nerve implant they prefer a botox first to release the tight muscle see because of 8 10 years of age where the brachial plexus where the herb point is totally damaged and a nerve graft is done it doesn't accept most of the times it is seen that the nerve graft doesn't accept after few years of age so what they do is a cosmetic surgery along with a botox this is what is done recently two of my kids will be going for that surgery it was planned in april but then somehow because of the corona it cancelled so this is what is done latest by the orthopedics and the neuro man the next question is positioning yes. the arm overhead yes. will it not cause more stretch on the nerve no it no it's a resting position stretch on the nerve will be this no if the hand is taken away from the head the head is lateral see you can feel the stretch you can do it yourself and see this is the position where you are applying it i am talking about right affected hair so stretch kahan aayega jab haath lamba karenge ha the shoulder is getting pulling more on the outside the lateral traction force whereas what we are doing is this position wherein it is squeezed the brachial plexus and the shoulder and the girdle is in a relaxed contracted position in fact this position helps in the healing of the hematoma or the injury so this position doesn't give this is a very comfort you must have seen normal babies also sleeping like this you know babies usually sleep like this or sleep like this because this is a very relaxing position for the girl this is a very relaxing position babies are very happy in this position okay okay uh, the next next question is can yes. we elaborate more on electrical stimulation like what modes can be used and do we have any special electrodes uh, to be used not for not actually kids? needed you can use your normal electrode pen electrode is not needed i do it with a flat electrode so that the current the concentration of the current reduces so i use flat electrodes with lot of cotton on it so that the sensitivity there is no hyper sensitivity and i give it on a galvanic mode paradic mode is not needed here because it is uh, a lower motor neuron so a galvanic mode is quite enough and galvanic mode with 30 to 45 contractions not like the 90 contraction funda 30 to 45 contraction frequency as i said because the sensory part is weak the baby doesn't go very cranky when you are doing stimulation that is the reason the very important thing is you apply it from your side also so you get to know the control of how much sorry current you are using you can actually actively put your thumb and index finger and feel for the current otherwise stimulation has given good results but it is again it is not the primary treatment it is just given so that we get a little amount of initiation first 15 days you can concentrate on the alternate basis then you can do regular if everything is going fine stimulation is not needed after one month and you can just give stimulation for the deltoid the brachialis more for the brachialis because brachialis takes more time to give good results brachialis is a moment which is a very fine moment it's a muscle which takes a longer time that is the reason concentrate on the brachialis the deltoid middle fiber and the finger extent even if you give these three points is more than enough 
one more important thing i forgot to uh, add on is there's a good you can use the brain stem reflexes also there's a good sucking reflex in the baby so what you can do is you can tell the mother to continuously give the initiation to make the baby hold the thumb the left hand or the affected hand thumb so that because of the sucking you have that concentration or the concentric contractions of the biceps and the brachii this can be done 3 to 4 times a, uh, in a day so the, so you don't you achieve the elbow flexion as earlier okay yeah Thanks. next yeah Uh, in case of a complete injury or a child showing poor signs of recovery what would be the further physiotherapy management and any advice you would give to the parent for handling the child at home yeah see usually by end of one month we get to know whether if the emg and cv is not done we get to know whether the recovery is a good recovery or it is not showing a good graph so and usually with uh, a baby there is a follow up with a neurologist or an orthopedic in a month so if you feel that the initi- the initiation is not good the baby is not using the arm at all then refer back to the neurologist after one month we use we go in for a emg ncv study emg ncv gives us a very uh, accurate result of where the damage is and the percentage of damage one percentage of damage is clear the surgery if it is a complete tear and it's a total brachial plexus injury then the baby are referred for surgery but after few months so till that time you can use again for physiotherapy to maintain the tone of the muscle but that if it's a complete tear physiotherapy will not give you results then you have to send the baby for the further investigation but this has to be within one month if you feel it's not giving good recovery don't drag yourself for later 3 to 4 months by the end of one month make a chart of the activity by the end of one month if there is absolute no recovery refer back to the neurologist it's a team work like me and dr udani rajesh udani it's a team work we we share our emails or we share the photo i usually send him the videos of the recovery because from what side it gets difficult for the baby to go to hinduja he just evaluates it if needed he calls the baby or else if, if there is some complication i talk to him and i refer him back that's that's how we go okay the next that's question work yeah what should be the frequency of sessions in a week and what should be the duration for the same uh as i am a uh, you know people usually say i drag my sessions mai ye bahut time lagati hu ek bachche ke liye ashok bhanushali will justify that i i uh, unless and until i get satisfied i don't leave the baby but that is for 45 minutes with with good breaks i don't take it at a stretch even the ball exercise which i showed you after every one and half to two minutes i lift the baby up i give a good positioning and then again i make the baby lie on the ball it's not that continuously for 15 minutes i am doing it uh the, what what was the other thing you asked duration can be 40 45 minutes and what, what should be the frequency in a week frequency, yeah yeah frequency is um first month a uh, five days a week very much needed because i tell you you give a home therapy but with such a small baby the parents are very scared to do so they don't do it at home so first month five days a week needed okay utara in case uh, a child has clavicular fracture along with a palsy uh, what would be the management yeah if there is an underlying uh, clavicular fracture then a brace is given by the orthopedic along with a brace you can start your exercises but now in this case you have to avoid the overhead activities so overhead positioning will be avoided because you put a pressure on the clavicle so the positioning will be changed you can do only a 90 degree positioning you can here you can concentrate more on the stimulation and joint approximation wait for 14 days for the recovery and then you can start the active assisted movement so you have to give two weeks for the clavicle to heal but still you can start the positioning avoid overhead avoid joint approximation you can do joint approximation but with a proper care and the therapy will go with the clavicular brace it's very rare but very very rare the uh, out of all my kids i had only one kid who was a clavicular fracture it's very rare okay the next question is uh, do we use any particular pediatric scales for ups palsy or is only musculoskeletal examination more than enough 
uh if you see here in india even the neurologists don't use any kind of scales because this is something very mandatory agar ye hai to hai the attitude of the arm itself shows that it's an nerve palsy so there is no there cannot be any grading done or there cannot be any particular test to you know come to a conclusion agar uh, if it's a upper motor neuron if it is related to your brain in as in cerebral palsy you need to do certain reflexes and tests to rule out where the baby stands but this is a a normal plain case wherein the evaluations are more than enough the assessment is more than enough okay a very important thing is the birth history there it is something which is mentioned recorded on the birth history so it's something which you know very plain and simple okay uh, hi hello uh, dipali ma'am uh, is it okay now can i talk yes yes sure yes okay you okay. are the host <laughs> thank you so much okay uh, moderators can i please request now can we wind up with the questions as we do not have more time left the meeting meeting can get over can i yeah i'll be answering to all of you all yes yes feel yes. free to yeah feel free to send your questions no issues yes we will be answering each and every participants question you can even put your questions on whatsapp group i'll just open the group you can keep keep uh, texting us till tonight we can take your groups and answer you back uh, now uh, i will just uh, uh, thank you dr dipali ma'am for our resource person and helping us so much with this topic it was a great 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 lecture and thank you all the participants for giving us your precious time on sunday <laughs> so thank you so much now can i request dr nazim uh, to give us a thank you note please dr nazim yes महाराष्ट्र स्टेट कमिटी मेम्बर्स if the lecture is recorded i'll see to it that i'll send it to everyone because many people have missed the initial part so i'll just check out if it is recorded and i'll send it to you all thank, thank you, you so much thank it you was so my much. pleasure thank you snehal and the whole iip team thank you thank you thank you everybody thank you iip members thank you iip wc that is indian association of physiotherapy thank you everybody for this warm 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 time and thank you resource person uh it was a great effort doing our first webinar we are extremely sorry for any miscommunication or any technological issue that has happened i would request everybody to participate in again with our webinars or we are doing many more activities you people are requested to join us again uh thank you everybody let's end up our meeting bye thank you happy sunday